Okay, welcome to today. Today I'm gonna to be making beef jerky or biltong. I'm using a beef gorello, or you can use silver side, you can use the uh, pre-cut meat, whatever you wanna use, but you know, I find that this is a really good one. I'm gonna be using with that some salt, some Greek oregano, mustard, garlic powder, coriander, cumin, also got paprika, cayenne pepper, and I'm going to marinate that all in an apple cider vinegar base. This is over a couple of days. So this is day one where we're preparing everything for marination. And then tomorrow we'll be doing the rest of it. Okay, the first thing is going to be that we're going to have to trim all this fat off the meat because we don't want any of this fat because it's not part of what we want to be um, drying out because this just gives it a really awful flavor. And once that's trimmed, I'm then going to slice it up very, very finely. Okay, I've removed all the fat. So now we've got a nice lean piece of beef. If you're scared with your knife skills, just go buy the beef stir fry and you can just start like that. But I like using a whole piece of meat because I know where meat comes from. Um, now I'm gonna slice this up and we'll see this in a few minutes. Okay, I've cut my meat into two pieces. It's just easier to work this way, leaning it sideways. Now I'm cutting it, as you can see, into nice little pieces, which are approximately you know, two mil thick. And I'm gonna continue cutting that all the way along there. And I'm gonna do exactly the same for this one. I'm gonna start here and work my way back. Okay, now that all my meat's been cut, as you can see there, nice even pieces, because these will be easy to handle when I'm putting it out. But like I said, you can always use the stir fry mix if you're not too comfortable. And also what I did is I took my cumin seeds and also my um, fresh, sorry, my Greek oregano, and I've crushed them well because you don't want big bits when you're doing into it. Now I'm gonna make up with a few teaspoons of all of the rest of these. One teaspoon, whatever, the recipe will be in the description below. So I will start and then we'll take it to the next step. Okay, I've mixed all my spices together and I also did forget to mention uh, a little bit of white or black pepper because you need to do that. As you can see, it's all well mixed. And now I'm gonna add my apple cider vinegar, about half a liter. And then we'll take it from there. Now that's all mixed. Like I said, approximately 500 mils. And now's the time to taste it because obviously you're gonna be pouring this over the meat. So you can adjust it for, if you want, need more salt. Well, you know, some more um, heat, like your cayenne pepper or chili. Um, some paprika, but I think this is tasting beautiful. So this will be going straight onto the meat now. And we mix it through. Put it in and then um, with your uh, a spoon, you're gonna mix it through. So that way all of the meat gets nice and covered in the juice. And then we're gonna put this into the fridge for approximately uh, 10 to 12 hours. So till tomorrow morning. Okay, day two. So this is 24 hours later. I've let the um, meat marinate. So as you can see, it's taken on the color of the marinade and it's just looking ready to go. The vinegar has helped to coagulate the proteins in there and nullify all the bacteria. So I gave it a bit of a mix as well. So as you can see, it's ready to go. And I'm gonna put everything into my food dryer. Now, it's a, just a standard food dryer that you buy from the um, you know, any good major retailer. They're about a hundred bucks. I've had this for 20 years, so I, I think they're about a hundred bucks anyway. Um, if you don't have a food dryer, you can try it in the oven, but you would have to keep the oven at around about 50 degrees Celsius and put it on a tray with a rack because you want the air to go around and through it. So this will be now, I'm simply going to put all of my meat onto the dryer. And as you can see, I'm wearing gloves for this one because it's food that I'm not gonna be cooking. And because I'm not gonna be cooking it, I don't want the bacteria from my hands going onto the meat. So as you can see there, I'm now going to do that for the five trays and then we'll put it on to dry. Um, it'll take around about six to eight hours, just keep an eye on it. Um, and then we'll see it from there. Okay, so I've Done all my trays. As you can see, they're not too tightly packed as you want that heat to go through, that air circulation. Um, I will be doing this outside because it is a very pungent smell. 
So um, my, even though I love eating it, I don't like the house smelling of it for days. Um, I've got to set up outside where um, I'll show you once I put it out. Um, and like I said, it's going to be taking anywhere between sort of four and eight hours. I just got to keep an eye on it, depending on how um, thin your meat is. This should take around about six to seven hours, but we'll know in a little while. Um, you just let it now uh, dry. Okay, the dehydrator's on. It's outside, like I said. And now I simply, because it, it can attract um, flies and stuff because of the smell, I simply put an um, old milk crate that I've put some um, wire over, and that stops any flies and um, anything going onto it. So every so often, every couple of hours, I'm going to come out and check it. Eight and a half hours later, look how much it shrunk from, that's the same trays as I put in earlier when you saw that, but they're ready, and, hmm, good even if I say so myself, if you try it, you'll love it, enjoy.